Hey guys, welcome back to Ignored Logistics. Today's project is an engine swap and upgrade on my Push Weed Eater. Now, I got the Weed Eater for free, and when I got it, this engine was on it and it was not running. And as you may be noticing, this engine is incredibly, incredibly rigged. So, I just want to show you a few of the things that I did to squeeze a couple more years of life out of this poor thing. And then we'll go into how we're going to fit this new, larger engine to the Weed Eater. So this engine that was originally on my weed eater was a 190cc Briggs & Stratton 625 series with 6.25 pounds of torque. There's a few backyard modifications that have been made to this poor thing. Uh, most notably is that you'll see the top shroud is gone. That's because as I was trying to get this thing running, the pull start was broken. And rather than fitting a new one to it, I opted to go with the tried and true drill start method where you put a drill on the bolt and run it and start it right up. The next major modification that you'll see on this thing is that the throttle control system is completely hardwired, so to say. That's because when I got this thing, the spring was no good. So rather than fix that, I took a piece of what I think is coat hanger, if I had to guess, bent it around, looped it around here, and found a position that it more or less ran correctly and stuck a sheet metal screw through it. You'll also notice that this is completely detached. Another thing of note on this side is that the air filter is completely missing. Obviously, this wasn't going to lead to a long life in this little engine, but I managed to squeeze about two years out of it after this. The reason that it's missing is because the little bit of restriction on airflow was actually keeping the engine from running and it just wouldn't run with any kind of air filter on it. So I said, well, let's just take the air filter off. Another example of me saying to heck with it and just taking it off is the exhaust. Once again, the exhaust was pretty plugged up and this poor engine just wouldn't run with the exhaust on. So I slapped on my earmuffs, removed the exhaust, and away she went. The last set of modifications that you'll notice to this thing is that this entire side of the shield is ground away, leaving me plenty of room to work in here where the brakes and safety cable would normally attach. Now the engine brake is still there, but it was never really in use and the safety cable is what usually allows the little ground here, right here, to ground out right here. What the safety cable normally does is it lets the engine brake hit, and this little contact here, let's see if I can show you a little better, that one right there, touch this spot right here, which is grounded out. Now, what that does is it grounds out the spark plug so that no spark is produced and a spring will push this little brake against this uh, to stop the engine for you whenever you let off the safety. Now with no safety it sits in this position and whenever I'm ready to turn off the engine I would either take a key and ground that out myself or push it forward. So when the head gasket blew on this one, even though I've got the material to fix it, I opted to finally just replace the poor thing with something a little bigger and a little beefier. However, engine swaps always come with a few little issues of fitment. I'm not sure if the camera will show it, but you'll see that this output shaft on this engine is actually significantly smaller than this output shaft on the new engine. So in my case, to fit the Briggs & Stratton 875 series motor, with the one inch output shaft, I ordered this from, I believe, Phoenix Manufacturing, little pulley with a one inch input shaft and a five inch diameter, which is the same diameter that my original used. So what we'll do is we'll take our pulley and we will hopefully be able to put it right where we want it on this input shaft. And you'll notice that I needed a key. Now, for the life of me, I couldn't find anything online, so what I did is I took this pulley and this engine down to a local hardware store that specializes in all kinds of nuts and bolts and specialty little bits and pieces, and I found a bit of key stock that I believe will fit in right here in this keyway. As you can hopefully see here, this key is going to be a tight fit. I'm going to have to cut it down to length and then probably give it a little bit of persuading to fit through this keyhole. The first thing I'll need to do is figure out about how much key stock I'm going to need. So I'm going to take my tape measure and I can see that that's right about two inches or so, probably a little less, and I'm going to go ahead and cut down my key stock to size. So now that I've got my key stock cut, the next thing I need to know is know how far down that pulley needs to sit. 
And in this case, it's as simple as just taking a little bit of a measurement. So it looks like just about an inch of clearance because the mounting points, I believe, are the same for this engine as the other engine. So to make sure that the spacing on the pulley matches, I measured it out and I went ahead and cut off a little block of wood that we're gonna use as a spacer when we put the new pulley on to make sure that it sits where I want it as I'm hammering in the little key. So to assemble it on my pulley, I'll put the extruded end towards the engine. But before I do that, because I have to do this one-handed, we're going to take a little bit of a block of wood, plop that in there, and then we're gonna use our spacer that we just cut and get it just about right. I'm gonna stick it out here on the edge. And hopefully when I let this down, that will just happily set right where it needs to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can persuade this in. So you'll notice that I actually have about a quarter of an inch sticking up here and that's on purpose. This little part here is actually from where the inside portion of the keyway begins to curve out and that helps it jam against this little flywheel. So I'm gonna whack this a few more times and then what I'm gonna do is mark this and grind off the excess. So the next thing to note is this little input spot for a bolt and a washer. I've got the concave washer and the bolt that came off of the old mower. And before I put them in there, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of blue thread locker to keep this from wiggling its way out. So now that that's done, I'm going to point the concave end of the washer towards the output shaft. And we're gonna go ahead and screw this in by hand and we'll tighten it up here in just a minute. All right, so here's all of our parts. Now, moment of truth is gonna be whether or not these engine mounts line up with my existing ones. So the engine mounts line up perfectly, so that makes my life a lot, a lot easier. Saves an entire step of fabrication. And I do wanna show you this. Where this bar and output shaft sit, this is the axle, and it actually is pretty suspiciously close, but there is no intersection there, so I'm just gonna leave it and we're gonna hope that that doesn't cause any problems. That being said, that should be right at the same height as it was. And once I get all this tightened up, we will have a mounted engine. All right, so we do actually need to do a little bit of cutting. We have a little bit of metal here that's catching that longer drive shaft that's coming out of this engine. So now that I've got that notched out, this should fit right in. All right, <clears throat> this is starting to really come together. So all I gotta do is put some gas in it, figure out how to get this electric start going and we should be in business. Well, and of course some oil, that's pretty important too. I've got her gassed and oiled up, so now all that I have to do is figure out how the wiring is supposed to work to this engine. As you can see right down here by the starter, I have a little quick connector that should run this little starter, so that's no big deal. <clears throat> and then I have two wires coming out of the back. Now, from my experience, these are most likely a kill switch, either connected or a part will be the run position. I haven't figured out which yet. And so once I've figured all that out, I'm going to wire all these up to a toggle switch and a momentary switch, and then we should be able to get this thing going. But before all that, I'm running out of daytime and I'm gonna have to come back to this tomorrow. So I've taken the top off and we're gonna give it the good old drill start. Okay, so I think that answers my question where the kill switch is. So I'll end up wiring in a switch there and we'll put the starter switch in tomorrow. Today it is raining, so I've got this inside and I've gone ahead and taken the back plate off. So now the goal is to mount the battery and hook up all of the wiring. And then I think we're going to create a little panel for my kill switch and my starter button. So here's that back panel. The goal, I think, is going to be to put some angle iron here, stick the battery here, and then use some metal tape that I've got to just cinch that battery down. 
It's not going to be fancy, but it should work and it should make the battery fairly easily removable if I need to. Of course, I've got my battery. This is just a little Lawn and Garden AGM battery that I've had for quite a while. It's been on three or four different little motorcycles and different things through the years. And as far as I know, it still works. It's actually been on a trickle charger for like the last six months to a year. So I really don't even know, but we're going to give it a shot today. I've also got a 20 amp intermittent switch. Now I went with a 20 amp one because I didn't feel like wiring in a relay to a lawnmower to keep it from blowing up. So hopefully this will be enough to run that starter. If not, the blue smoke might escape and I'll actually have to put a relay in. But we'll give that a shot. And finally, I've got just a basic, basic toggle switch. And all that's gonna allow us to do is ground out that connection that you saw down here to turn off the lawnmower whenever it's running. And last but not least, I also went ahead and got a little flat kind of standard pin connector thing. And what that'll allow me to do is hook in the battery to our starter, which has a similar connection, but I will have to wire in that intermittent switch to make sure that this thing's not always running. So this will be my little piece of angle iron. This is just a bit that I cut off of some scrap that I had outside. The next thing that I'm gonna do is, even though I've got this hole here, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a couple of pilot holes because I'm gonna be using sheet metal screws and not a welder this time. I've got my little center line. I've got a tick mark on my piece. So let's get a couple of sheet metal screws in here. And naturally the weather is going terrible because I'm out here doing mechanicing work. It happens literally every single time. I heard a clanging noise a second ago. And it's because this big old heavy hood got blown over, which hasn't happened in months and months. Uh, so we'll put that back over here. Hopefully, keep it from falling over again. Whew. All right, I gotta love wonderful weather. If you guys can't hear me over that, I'm sorry. It's kind of shaking my whole shop here. Now, I am a little concerned about these nubs that are sticking up wearing a hole into the side of the battery. So my plan is actually to put two layers of this. I'm gonna put one as a backing layer right here to hopefully shield these nubs so they don't wear that hole. And then we'll put one over the top. All right. And just like that, the little weed eater now has a pretty su substantial battery on it that I should be able to wire up to everything here. Not sure how I'm supposed to talk to you guys, but we're gonna see if we can keep going anyway. So I'm gonna try to turn this around to give myself a little bit of a surface here to work with. And while flipping this around is not exactly ideal, it should allow me to rest a little piece of sheet metal here that I can put my switches in. I have got my piece of metal cut out and as you can see, I've kind of roughly sketched out the shapes of the two switches that I'll need. I more or less just laid these on here and traced them. So rather than going straight at it with a saw, what I'm actually gonna do is put it on the drill press and I'm gonna start kind of piecing out some of these pieces. And I believe I have a drill bit that is this size. So we'll just use that for that. But I'm gonna use a bunch of little holes to kind of punch this out. And then I'll go back and trim it up with something else. Obviously this isn't gonna fit. So I will show you a little technique that I've used in the past. It's really simple. All I'm gonna do is take my angle grinder and just trim this blade down a little bit at the end so that I can get it in that hole that I need. All right, and that should, should work. Okay, I've painted my piece and I've cut off this corner here so that it will fit a little bit cleaner on the weed eater. I'm gonna go ahead and put my switches in and then we're gonna go ahead and test fit this. But before I put my switches in, I wanna know which way is off and which way is on, and there's a very, very simple way to do that with a multimeter. Now, if you're not familiar with a multimeter, they're pretty much all more or less the same, and they're one of the best tools that you can have in your toolkit. So in this case, I wanna know if this has continuity at different uh, points in the switch. So for on this particular one, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bitty wave symbol right here. I'm gonna turn my multimeter to that wave symbol. And for my multimeter, I have to press this button a couple of times to get it there. And I see this little wave symbol appear in the bottom corner. So what that will do 
is you hear that beep? That means that there is continuity between these two probes. So in this case, I can take my switch and I can tell that right now there is no continuity between them. But if I flip the switch, I hear the beep. I know that these are connected. So in this case, this is actually gonna be off because when I connect those two wires, it's gonna ground out the spark plug and the weed eater is not gonna run. So here's the finished piece. And while that square cut is not beautiful and honestly not perfect at all, this should be plenty good for a weed eater. So as far as the wiring goes, all I have to do now is make sure that whatever I wire to my push button start is actually gonna start it. So I'm gonna strip the ends of these wires and connect it directly to this battery, and we're gonna see if that starter turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire up my kill switch here, and I believe in this case that red is going to be positive and that white will be negative. So I'm gonna put that to the test real fast. So red will be over here, white will be over here, and we'll see if it turns that starter or not. Okay, I'd say that that's pretty obvious that that's working. So now this button has these two wires coming out at the back of it. One of them connects to the positive of the starter. The other one connects to the positive of the battery. And when I press this button, it should start. Perfect. Now it's time to wire up our kill switch. So all that will be is taking these two wires and running them individually to these two prongs, which will allow our kill switch to work. Towards the mower should be running, towards the person should be off. So I'm gonna start it right there. We're gonna see if it'll start. It does not start. Let me switch that and we'll see if it'll start. and it starts and stops perfectly. Now, all I've got to do is clean up this little wiring harness and put the top back on, throw some weed eater line in it, and actually it looks like it stopped raining now. We may get to test this thing out tonight. Switch is to run. We've got kill and run written on here. And push the button. That is really loud, man. <laughs> man, I thought it was powerful before, but that's nice. Like you can just you can tell that it's powerful. <laughs> cool.